everybody. So I'm live here, and um, this is the first day that I'm uh, I'm going live. Um, hi, Karen. Hi, Maita and Pepper. Hey. Yeah. So I'm I'm going live here. Um, I just I felt like I really wanted to give something, you know, to people and um, maybe, you know, just kind of join the community and do some stuff, you know. Um, hi, Shauna. Hey, everybody. So, you know, and we can, we can have discussions, and um, I probably should even get my phone, too, which I don't have. I'm going to get my phone, too. So hold on. Hold on. Just getting my phone. Okay, I don't know where my phone is. <laughs> okay, so I'm just saying, wait, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting my phone in case, whoops, phone, in case, whatever. Hold on. Okay, well, I lost my phone. <laughs> one, one of those. Is this a senior moment? I don't know. So if if uh, if you want to, can't really call me. So <clears throat> if you want to say something, just write it down. Hey, Dan. Hey, Mila. <laughs> my footsteps sound cute. Nice. Yeah, how is every, first of all, let's just say hello to each other, and how is everybody doing? Oh, there's my phone. Hold on. Hi, Kate. <laughs> hey Kate, I'm just starting uh, my Facebook Live. I know you said you couldn't find your phone, so I called you. That is so nice of you. So Kate, Kate right, Richard, I'll, Kate I'll, Richard Skeller found my phone. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. <laughs> She's such a smart girl. So, if anybody would really like to um, call and speak up and be heard. Totally okay to call me, 818-599-3292. Otherwise, you could um, write your questions or comments, and we can, we can do whatever we want to do. But um, I would have had a Zoom, but I wanted it to be more um, connectable to people all over the world and, um, you know, who I know. So, hi, Mari. Hi, Mary. Hi, Alan. Dennis, Linda. So, yeah. So, you guys, um, hey, Nan. Uh, Judy, you're not eavesdropping. You're here. It's totally fine. So, um, well, first of all, I just want to wish everybody some real peace and some you know, great times to look within and to find some deeper things that lie under the surface. You know, this is a really great time for that. And um, when I stay away from the news, I, I mean, I like to keep informed, but when I stay away from the news, I actually do feel 
I feel a positiveness. I feel a spiritualness that I think I'm picking up from uh, the people I'm connected to and from and maybe beyond, you know. Um, thanks, Tennis. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Bob. Hi, Kath. Linda. Um, so I feel very positive, but of course, as those of you who know me, I'm a glass half full person, and I I can't hang out in um, in crap too long. And so I'd like to share that feeling and share information so that we can all pretty much stay up. You know what I mean? So uh, I could, oh, you're welcome, Sean. You know, I could do, um, I could talk about various things. I was considering talking about phrasing today, but uh, phrasing, you know, singing phrasing. Um, so what would you all like to know? What would you all like to talk about or um, hear? What, what would you like to maybe find out more information about? Why don't you, why don't you make some comments? Well, meanwhile, I'll tell you that I'm lining up some great people to talk. Um, so, I mean, cool. It's going to be really cool. Every... <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> um, every day, hi, Lorca. Hey, man, how you doing? Um, every day, I'm going to have different people. Maybe maybe Lorca will be one of my people. Um, actually, maybe Dennis Dreeth will be one of my people, too. He can talk about uh, licensing, licensing for music, which is, you know, a real uh, important thing, especially now where we have to find ways to make more money. Um, but Lorca, for instance, Lorca, the great drummer from San Francisco, um, we, I definitely want to speak with musicians as well as singers and business people to um, uh, get different points of view. And Lord knows musicians are really, have been really one of my basic learning tools since I was a child. Um, so it's it's great to ask musicians questions. Hey, like Don Littleton. Hello, Elini. Um, yeah, I'm going to have the guests on FaceTime and uh, I'm going to do uh, have it on my iPad. So basically, this is my phone, but I'll basically be holding it like that. And, and then we'll talk because it's FaceTime and I can't really do anything else on, I mean, Facebook. So, um, <laughs> Mary Bogue, I'm only dressed because I'm doing this. Otherwise, I'd be in my jammies, too. <laughs> and I see I put on a little makeup. I wouldn't have put on makeup. Okay. Hey, Gail. Hi. So, what would you like to talk about? What would you like me to go into is phrasing something interesting scatting um you know getting gigs uh making cds producing cds for yourself hey tony i owe you a phone call tony russell hi nora um please tell me are you interested in something specific i'm listening <laughs> i'm reading Nothing is going on. Come on, you guys. Tell me, what would you like to know? Well, okay, since you haven't written what you would like to know, I am going to start with phrasing. So I'm going to get a song, and we're going to talk about it. And let's see. Let's see how my uh, staying in the groove. Thank you, Maita. Okay, that is a great thing, and I'm sure some of the people online can make comments about that, especially we have two drummers. We have two drummers, and um, I'd definitely like to hear something from you guys, Lorca and um, Don. Um, I'd like to hear... hear um, Okay, and I am interested in how to effectively 
engage the audience when singing. About lesson plans, I know when I was walking through the process of making a CD a step by step, I better write these down, I think, because it looks like it's going to be a bunch of things. And actually, if, even if I didn't do it all, all today, it would be uh, great uh, as I have different guests, you know, and even picking the guests, you know. Hey, Nancy Sanchez. Uh, let's see. So staying in the groove. Got that. And phrasing. And engaging the audience. When singing, because that's pretty specific. Um, lesson plans and, yep, making a CD. Maybe I'll have um, Mark Winkler on, too, because he's really good at that. And so is, uh, um, well, there's several people, Barbara Brighton and uh, Dory Amarillo and Judy Wexler. Releasing singles. Yeah, that's really good. And uh, I know people who are releasing singles, Lorena, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to, um, CDs or um, in preparation for a CD, they're they're just they're releasing singles first. So that's an interesting point. Song choice, a hey oh hi Senna. So Senna would be a really great guest too during this time. Janice Anderson, Margaret McKay, song choice. I wonder what Stephanie would have have to say about that. Stephanie Haynes. She's in heaven, but <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry, Bonnie. Bonnie Janowski is a drummer, too. Okay, I'm going to ask you about the groove, too. Um, let's see. I had to do it all myself, and there are a number of steps to be done in an orderly fashion. Yeah, Bill, Bill Fulton. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. Written contracts for gigs. Yep. Okay, and, oh, cool, Linda, patter, yep, hi, Carolyn, hi, Miho, working on tone, um, yeah, singles, hi, Sina, Sina Eag, yeah, Hey, Sina, you could actually be my guest right now if you want, you're, since you're here. If you, want to, if you want to do that, you could um, Skype me or FaceTime, FaceTime me, and we can talk together, and I can hold you up like that. <laughs> so, Sina, I invite you to call me. Um, sight singing opposed empirical singing by ear. And that's kind of basically reading or, or singing by ear. Is that what you're talking about when you when you're when you're saying that, Manny? Because sight singing is a real specific thing. Um, so can you define that a little bit more? I'm I'm taking that as reading music or being able to um, sing by ear. Hey, Charmaine. <clears throat> okay, Sina, I'm inviting you to FaceTime or Skype me right, right now and join, whoops, and join, um, join me in the class and I'm going to open my 
I'm going to open my Skype. And where, where am I? Skype. I do have my Skype open. Okay. So. Um, okay. So I'm going down to the bottom. Uh, oh, good. Sin is going to join me. That's good. Um, so many of us hard to pay for musicians when we can never make money ourselves. Several people have said they just split what they get with everyone in the band, including the singer, while others of us always pay our musicians a good fee, but that leaves nothing for the singer. Do you think most musicians will be willing to take less so they can play? Yeah, I'm going to answer that first. Hi, Monica. You know, I've been... I've been singing professionally since I was a child and probably in college was when I started really working on my own. And um, then I moved to LA and um, I worked a lot and um, you know, it's the jobs were similar, you know, 30, 40 years ago, as far as um, some people wouldn't pay you a thing. I don't know if any of you remember the comeback in, that was a non-paying gig all with a tip jar. And, um, hey, John. And so uh, the owner used to walk around and get the tips, and we'd all go home with, you know, usually about $25 a piece. And um, then there was a period of time uh, where I did not take money. And... Uh, maybe I was out a little bit. It wasn't. It wasn't exactly like it is now. Now, now it's a really, it's a different community experience. Back then, all of us were working uh, parties, casuals, and uh, I mean, and uh, restaurants and lounges and stuff were paying us to work. We were doing top forty. We were doing jazz. Um, we were working eight or nine gigs a week, you know, and sharing gigs. And we were all working really hard. So it was a really, it was a different, really different time. So now you have um, most, you know, if we do find any places to pay, it's rare. And um, most of what we do is self-created, right? Somebody like me, because I'm friends uh, and um, cohorts with with musicians of my level, um, somebody like me doesn't have to pay musicians uh, much higher than um, you might expect, or um, maybe some musicians will just take will split it and they'll be happy with that. Um, Lately, I've been really wanting, I have been wanting to give my musicians at least something that, that is vaguely worthwhile, but that's not a lot. I know a lot of singers who, um, who didn't come from my background and don't have what we'd call, you know, kind of the same peer level is... Um, I know a lot of music, a lot of singers are paying their musicians a lot of money for rehearsals and the shows and the arrangements. <clears throat> and if that's what you want to do, that is probably the price that you have to pay. There are different ways to get experience and different different ideas, different creative ideas that you can come up with to um to make different situations like let's see what pepper says pepper is um uh, sister jean she's a top top blues singer who's done background and done done solo work and as some of you know her and some of you have um saw her at bar fedora my jazz series that i booked uh, she's an incredible singer with a huge history. So she says, you're right about paying the band a decent fee. That's why I had to start back to doing festivals for myself. And she remembers the comeback in. So um, here's Cinna. Hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> 
Beautiful lady. Hey, how are you? Fine. Okay, so here's Cinna Eag. Whoops, let's see. Hi. Sorry, let me get a good position for you. Okay, that's pretty good. Actually, I, I'm going to put my, uh, my blinds down so that there's no... Oh, there we go. That's a little better. So, Cinna, we were just talking. Now, I don't know if this applies to you because I don't think you're doing that many gigs that um, aren't uh, high-profile gigs or better-paid gigs. I don't know if you're you're doing small gigs anymore. Oh yeah, I do. You do? Um, I mean, especially in the states because I'm I'm new to the scene in the states, so it's I mean it's different, you know, from country to country. Um, in Denmark, I do more more high profile gigs, but but in Japan, I do some high profile and some very very small clubs. You know how it is in Japan, and yeah. it's, and I'm starting just from scratch in the states. So yeah, well, the question was, I don't know if you saw this, you know, just like the last few minutes. Um, oh, and Pepper, I see your answer too. Pepper says. Her band members are older, so uh, she pays them at least a hundred dollars, and they're all older gentlemen, no youngsters. So that's that's something to consider as well. But we were talking about um, paying the band members. You know, there's a lot of singers. Um, I'd call them semi pros in town who yes. are uh, they want to create these shows, and um, they pay somebody usually pretty big bucks to arrange music for a show. And then they pay a lot, usually kind of a large group of musicians to rehearse and then for the gig. And it, it costs a lot of money and they don't end up making money and they usually end up quite a bit out of pocket. So um, the question was, um, you know, where's the line drawn? How do you do it? Um, and I was just saying, somebody like me who has been doing it for years and has a whole bunch of friends who are peers, you know, they're more flexible with me because they know how I sing and they, they trust, you know, that I'm a good singer and they're friends of mine. And, uh, but yeah. I do try and make sure that they, like Pepper was saying that they get at least a hundred dollars. That's not very much, but you know, be, because they're friends too, they're more willing yes. for that, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it, it can be rather expensive if you, if you also, if you have to pay for arrangements and yeah, I can definitely see that. I, I always, actually, I always ask people for advice, especially in the States. I don't know the level of payment. So usually I would ask someone that I know what would be fair. Yeah, because I travel around from town to town, and I play with the so-called pickup bands, and sometimes I don't know what's you know reasonable. Yeah, because I, I when I travel, I have all these expenses, you know, my flights and hotels and stuff. So so I can easily just you know give all the money to the musicians, and I'll end up also paying out of pocket. Um, but I mean the the the, the uh, wages in Europe are, or at least in Scandinavia, are quite a lot higher than in the States. So, so for me, sometimes I, I'm, I'm surprised, you know, that I don't have to pay more. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I mean, I would like to say uh, one thing that I said in the, in the beginning when I started talking about this, <coughs> and Carolyn says, uh, I pay a base guarantee rate and if we make more I split it amongst the band and that's that's fine yeah hey Sandra um, and John and Roland and Chris hi so um, yeah and it would be nice to hear from you musicians um, what you expect actually and what you would like um, I feel like I feel, I don't know, There's there, it's kind of a deep question, actually. There's layers, you know. Yeah, because also, Kathy, it depends if people have to go out of town, you know. If, sometimes if you go, if, if for example, if you live in L.A. and play in Temecula, you have to, you're spending a whole day. So that, uh, that should, 
you should obviously be paid more than if you just drive for 20 minutes. Right. But sometimes that's not even possible. Um, right. And also, I think what I find it reasonable that sometimes the leader of the band, in this case, the singer, if there's a profit, then I feel it's okay not to share it always. Uh, if you if you pay the band the musicians a fee that they are happy with. Because sometimes, as you say, said before, you're actually going out of pocket. You know, you're losing money. So whenever, you know, there is a profit, maybe it's fair enough that the singer... I absolutely agree. That's very honest yeah. of you to say, and that's true. I agree with that totally. Because so many times <coughs> we do come out of pocket and we're working, yeah. we're generally getting the gig, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and that's not only for singers, that's also for instrumentalists who have oh, yeah. their own band. The leaders, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're we're really um getting we're we're doing a lot of work. So we should we should make a profit and usually I think you're right, it usually balances out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes we're out of pocket and then sometimes we make a little profit. I mean we're all yeah. just we're all kind of pretty much moving forward and uh, working together and seeing what happens and and we're all trying to keep our art going you know and and that's what's important to us mostly you know and those situations yeah. like pepper was saying yeah as a as as a duo that's that's easy that's an easy one right yeah um well let's talk about something else too unless i i'm open for musicians to make comments on what they hope to make as a side man and what they'd like to make as a side man and what they wouldn't make as a side man, you know, just anything that you musicians would like to tell singers on this list because uh, this live video is probably reaching a lot of singers. But um, for you, Sina, I, I would like to, one of the questions was uh, staying in the groove. You know, how does one work on staying in the groove, right? Which is always just a big issue for me at my workshops. I'm always like, oh, and we, we've had Armando Campion do like groove workshops, you know, and it's yeah. very interesting, you know, having people really uh, understand and, and internalize groove, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like some people are more talented than others. In, you know, regarding group. Yeah. Um, but I think everybody can learn or at least improve. Um, you know, basically, I think dancing is a good idea. Yeah. Um, you know, and also think about um, there are two different things, a ways of seeing the groove and, and the way you can relate to it. It's like you can, you can listen to whatever the band plays or the, the musician you play with, if it's, if it's a duo, um, and you can follow the group or you can have your own group. Yeah. Um, I think both I think are important, right? Life. I think both are important. Yeah, it is. You can't just stop having your own group. Right. Because then all of a sudden, if something happens in the band, um, and that's especially when you play duo, then there, you don't, if you play with a piano player or a bass player, you don't have a drummer to keep the beat. And if the piano player all of a sudden feel, feels uh, wants to take some freedom uh, time-wise or, or, you know, stop playing for a bar, it's important that you have your own group. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a very, it's, it's a mix between listening and grooving yourself, you know. Yeah, I always, I had this um, kind of a funny little, thing that I would bring up at workshops. So I would get a few different uh, rubber bands and I'd put a pencil up and I'd have one, I've, I'd have each rubber band one end around the pencil. And then I'd get everybody, uh, you know, like three people holding the other ends of the rubber bands and moving whatever way they wanted. And I would move the pencil up and down. So indicating that they were all connected to the groove while doing what they wanted, but they were connected to the groove, they couldn't let go. So that was kind of a good way to have people 
think about it, I mean, it's not, you know, of course, it's not, everybody has different ways of learning and understanding, but that was one way that people could go, oh, oh, I see, there's, I'm always connected to the same groove that he's connected to, you know? Yeah. And, and because, well, remember Weather Report, for instance, was pretty much one of the first, uh, I'd say popular groups, you know, other than maybe avant-garde music, but one of the first popular groups that um, did that actually, right? There was a groove, an unspoken groove that sometimes was touched upon, but each instrument did whatever they wanted, but they were all connected to that groove. You know, that was one thing that I found delicious and fascinating about them when they came out. Um, so, and then uh, the dancing, like Jay Clayton, uh, when she had done workshops here, she she made people dance around the room, you know, the whole time, and also Armando Campion, and um, and the it's so it's so crucial and important. Um, there's so many different exercises that we can do. Yeah. I wish pe more people would have, have had the opportunity to go to these classes that we had when I went to school in Denmark. Um, it was called, uh, what was it called? SSB, uh, Sangspil and Bewegelse, which means so uh, singing, playing, and movement. Oh. Song, play, and movement. So uh, they all, often they, um, they got inspired by um, African rhythms and Cuban, Brazilian stuff, and they had us dance and clap and play percussion instruments and just rehearsing, you know, taking simple steps while clapping something else like polyrhythms yeah. and singing at the same time. Yeah. And it's such a good exercise, you know, for, you know, just get it into your body and also understanding what's going on in the different uh, rhythmic layers. and. And if I, I would say to anybody who wanted to learn more about who, um, that, you know, if you can find a, like a class that does something like that, I would really recommend it. That is such a great suggestion. Yeah, so great. We, um, about two weekends ago, we had um, Keith, uh, what is his name, Taylor, uh, uh, Kate, are you still on? If you are what, Keith Taylor, is that it? Um, he's a body percussionist, and I first met him uh, a number of years ago at Jazz West, Madeline Eastman, that camp that Madeline Eastman was running. And um, he he was uh, he is a body percussionist. He's been doing that for since 1978, and this workshop pretty much was is like that. Uh, we were yeah. dancing. We were we were doing these, um, you know, uh, patterns, and then we were singing songs, and it was um, yeah, it was amazing, uh, and it it was hard. It was challenging, but it wasn't impossible. And what was so cool was once we learned the patterns and we knew what we were supposed to do, um, he made us go faster and not think. And we did it yeah. better because it's innate, right? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's 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 so good for you. It's and it, you know, I I'm, I was really surprised when after a couple of years after I took those classes at school, I, I could really tell that that it had moved it moved my development, you know, really really quickly. Yeah. You know. Just the smallest exercise can can change your whole way of uh, of improvising, and you know it's. We have to do workshops. Like actually, my brother is an educated teacher in that uh, thing. In that in that specific subject. Yeah. Oh. He, he's a saxophone player, and he he uh, went to this uh, music conservatory where us uh, you know subject like that it is as important as playing the saxophone. It's like a main wow. class of yeah. Yeah, we should, <laughs> I think we should, um, maybe all of us, you know, uh, with any suggestions, actually, um, you know, we could post, um, 
the different things that we could uh, we could practice to do that. I think that's a really good idea. You know, this body right. percussion being one one thing, and um, um, Evie Ladden is Keith's wife, and of course somebody's ringing my doorbell, and um, and so she does uh, what is it called clogging. And she sings and she plays banjo and she's amazing. And she also was part of the workshop as well. It was really interesting. Um, oh, let's see. <laughs> still on this, um, yeah, still on the love, value the work. And I mean, I'm going to, I was kind of looking a little bit back here. And um, Sandro Feliciano, he's a wonderful drummer. He, uh, uh, talking about the money and the musicians, he said, we're on this together. It's really deep and all depends the gig situation, but at least I'd love to know how much you think I'm worthy and how how would you do on an ideal situation if you could. Oftentimes the musicians don't wear the hats properly, but the leaders don't do it easy either, mostly as a trust to who you are working with. And that's true. If I'm going to get a gig for $2,000 and I have two other players, I'm practically going to split it. Hey, Anita Wardell. Wow. Do you, S yeah. Sina, do you know Anita? Yeah. She just joined. Hey. <laughs> so, um, okay, so that was a bit on groove. Um, I, have, uh, I have, these are the things that people mentioned, phrasing, engaging the audience when singing, lessons, lesson plans, uh, making a CD, which I think I might get into that later, releasing singles as opposed to a CD, contracts for gigs, patter, tone, reading music um, as opposed by singing by ear. And, I mean, I would like to hear, you know, I'd like to talk about um, with you maybe phrasing or engaging the audience when singing or tone. I think those three things are kind of your, some of your highlights. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about let's talk about tone first. <laughs> tone. Tone. I mean, some people are just blessed with a beautiful tone. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> they kind of not, they kind of do it I even unknowingly, right? I'm getting a tone at all. Uh huh. Your you tone is. In my speaking voice is not very. You know so. Your tone I mean, is beautiful, though. Really hard. Anita oh, says turn. hello, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's something, I mean, I'm not really a very good um, vocal technique teacher because I basically haven't really, really, really studied what's going on in, in the body. I know a few things, and, and I, sometimes I can hear in people's sounds, what's up, you know, where the tension could be. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the tone is, one one thing that can really improve your tone is your breathing and yeah. your flow of air. As we also talked about last time I was at your house. Yeah. Um, you know, if you can, if you can practice your, your air flow and your uh, support, then you can really, really improve what you have already. Yeah, I totally agree with you. That is yeah. so crucial. And you're, you were a sax player coming up, and so yeah. you benefited from that. And I think um, a lot of singers, if, they're, if they haven't studied, really studied, then they really don't know about that. And it's... Um, it takes a lot of confronting and um, committing to practicing and really researching the body and understanding how it works to to um, to um, so to get the support right. But you you gave some really wonderful exercises when you were here for the workshop. Um, Thanks. Yeah, that was really good. I can't. Uh, can you do you remember what you might have said exactly or? Just about um, that. So one of the things I try to remember is uh, because when I grew up and I, I was taught singing, uh, one of the key words 
would be to actually almost hold your breath because a lot of a lot of young uh, singers you know they lose their breath all too soon but I mean that's just one little thing uh, but can I can I interrupt time. you for a second <clears throat> because to me I have different concepts of the word hold sometimes oh. a student will come to me and they're whole they're holding their breath like holding it you know what I mean like the whole, that kind of holding that's not good holding I think yeah they're like they're not releasing their breath you know in tone but I but I think the holding that you're speaking of how I like to think of it is holding it in this um, tank right of reserve yeah so letting it go very slowly yeah but but the thing is if you think like that then you, the one problem you can you can have later on is that you actually don't you're not focused enough on the flow that you need to have right. like air going out of your lungs again and actually making your instrument vibrate right you actually need a certain amount of air going out in a very steady tempo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, that's that's something that I've, I I have found useful to to be aware of. And a lot of people I meet, a lot of singers I meet, that's a good um, keyword for them or key phrase that that you need to you know be aware of the flow of air. Right. And there are different. Um, exercises you can do I, I enjoy doing the you know where you sing the song um, on like a rolling tongue or the lips yeah. then you actually find out how much work it is to sing you know yeah how much energy, you know if you sing the whole song like that you'll be tired <laughs> and that's actually the amount of energy that that I feel I, I if I actually use that amount of energy I, I get a better tone yeah well that's yeah. In interesting because you can't really overblow doing that and part of part of the the whole process is is not um, not wasting air as you said before you're you're releasing a small amount of air but it's constant right yeah and that's what's that those exercises you can't do those exercises if a you don't release air and b if you are over, over release so those exercises are really good so i think um i don't think anybody is confused about that it's just you you do the you do the either the tongue trills or the lip trills singing the whole song like that and and that's what sin is talking about hi greta matasa hi hi sj and louise and, and the funny thing is when when you've done that after singing the whole song like that, then if you immediately after that sing the song, you know, with the lyrics, you you'll find you'll you'll experience uh, some freedom, you know, like yeah. wow, <laughs> my voice is is liberated and and powerful. Yeah, and the key and the the other part of the key to that is to do it daily, because anything we practice gets better, and even hi, hi Grata baby, and. Anything we practice gets better, and if we practice bad things, that gets better too. <laughs> yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the that's the that's the one of the tricks of life. Yeah, look, I have to find some, some uh, power from my phone. I was kind of okay. You know, I stay too much on my phone these days, so <laughs> 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 nothing much to do here. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're talking with Sina E. Who's a, one of the best singers that I know. Uh, she was here in LA a few months ago. She did a workshop at my house and she also performed at Feinstein's with Larry Koontz and Josh Nelson. And that was a great week. It was her and Luciana Souza and Michelle Nicole from Australia. And I, I was super satisfied that week in my heart. And they were all singing with two players each. And uh, you know, it was the, the things that I admire about singers, <clears throat> which are uh, honesty, high quality of um, high quality of their own ability, um, 
respect and mutual understanding with the musicians, comfort in front of the audience, um, and uh, and honesty. I mean, truth. That's what I. That's what I know that I love about artists, and I'm sure most of you love that too. <clears throat> and so Cinna is one of those type of artists. Um, and actually, uh, <clears throat> oh, Linda Heil says you, she has never met, missed one of your gigs. She's seen you at <laughs> Kumbwa. Kumbwa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, Linda. <laughs> so um, let's, yeah, let's talk about um, engaging the audience when singing because, now, now this is interesting. There's the idea of engaging the audience and then there's engaging them while you're singing. And those are really kind of two different things, aren't they? Um, you know what I mean? Because you're very funny. You are. Yeah. You're a comedian too, and also serious too. But you're you're very uh, enjoyable to to listen to and watch as you go from song to song too. Because you include us, the audience, and and you're funny. <laughs> you're yourself. Yeah, that that's the thing. You have to figure out to be yourself. Um, I think there's a, it's a little risky or dangerous to wanting to engage the audience too much. Because yeah. that become awkward. I agree. You have to do it, you know, the way you would just talk to people. They're, I mean, they're just people, basically. Yeah. yeah. And they've come to see you, your show. And, um, you know, it, you know, when singing a song, there are so many different ways of doing that. You know, some some singers are very active with their hands or their facial expressions, and some singers are just, you know, focused and and don't really pay attention to how how they look or what what the audience how they react. And I think both both uh, things work. Uh, can work. Me um, too. So you just you just have to find out what is the best way to do it for you. You know. Again, it's I, truth. The truth I, for you, right? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you uh, you just. Or sometimes I just like feel so relieved when I see a singer on stage who does not do much. Yeah. Um. And, and and don't say much either. I mean, you don't even have to say much between the songs. Only if you feel like. Yeah, actually, that brings to mind Liz Wright. Have you yeah. seen her? Yeah. So she's always, like, in between songs, she's always making these little comments, like, stuff like her band says she shouldn't talk or she doesn't want to talk, she's too shy. Or <laughs> and it doesn't really matter because those kind of comments are the truth for her. And... And you're drawn in by her honesty, and also her singing is so. Yeah. It's like a religious I mean, experience. <clears throat> but the audience also would like to know you, you know. Yeah. I mean, they also get to know you if you don't say anything, because that, maybe that's the the right thing for you to do. But uh, apparently, but but um, I I feel sometimes when I remember to tell a little bit about my talk a little bit about myself and the songs, you know, especially my own songs, that people really like that because then they get another um, experience from listening to the lyrics and, you know, it's, it, but it's, but I don't think there are any, you know, rights and wrongs in, in this, except for what you say, you just have to be true and be yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I've been through, over the years, I've, I've, gone through different states of mind performing um uh you know like in the one state i just couldn't open my eyes you know and uh, you know what i mean i had to like close yeah. my eyes i've heard that a lot actually i remember one time this was many years ago uh kate mcgarry was singing at a club and she closed her eyes the entire time but she was so focused and in it that i was crying throughout the concert because I was yeah. totally getting it, you know. I didn't need yeah. her to open her eyes and stare us down or anything, you know. And um, I also like to talk about these this three universe idea, which is 
the first universe is my my universe. Uh, this is while I'm singing. So the first universe is me, and I have to take care of business. You know, I have to be yeah. connected and and sing sing well, and you know, the second universe expands. It includes the first universe. It expands to the musicians. So now me and the musicians are in the second universe. And that is real magical. And when I see people not do that, like, you know, singers who get up who don't listen to the musicians, the musicians don't even sound that good, right? You have, no. to, you have to contribute within that second universe. And then the third universe includes the audience, uh, but not without the first and second universe in place. <clears throat> So that's kind of an interesting route to take, you know, and you, so yeah. you never forget the first universe is really important. The second universe is really important, you know, and then I'm going to include the audience and they're going to get the benefit of those first two universes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's, that's true. That's, I think that's also kind of how I work. Yeah. I, I find it hard not to, you know, be very present in the third universe. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's okay, though. But but you you don't leave the first and second universe. You don't start with the third no. universe. That's the thing. You don't start with the third universe. You start with the first and second universe. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I have uh, somebody, Craig Cochran, he's saying that he finds it extremely helpful to watch videos of himself and notice the odd body language things that that um, anxiety makes me do, stage anxiety, things I normally don't do in normal conversation, like <laughs> blinking a million times a minute, biting my lip, looking at the ground, whatever, identifying them is the first step to, uh, to making them go away. Sandro says, being through t true to yourself, probably. True to yourself is the key for engaging the people. I always believe in that. And he, he's really good at that. And Lorena says, that she thinks that the audience likes to get to know the performer and how the song relates to them, not with yeah. every single song, but it just brings your audience closer. <laughs> Anita says, I've been told to open my eyes. Mine are always closed. Yeah, and, and it's true. I, when I see videos of myself, the closed eyes is okay, but when I open my eyes, even I, looking at myself, you know, see the difference. And you don't have to stare down people, of course. And... Um, but, you know, <laughs> you have to be yeah. brave enough to be there and, and to look at people. That, you have to be that. But I've also seen performances, especially now with, with all these videos available on YouTube. Yeah. All, you know, all my old heroes, they, some of them sing with their eyes closed, like a whole ballad. And it's amazing. Yeah. But, but also, like, it can also be strong if you sing with your eyes closed and then all of a sudden you open your eyes. You know? Yeah. Now, let's talk about uh, phrasing. Uh, this might be the last thing that we talk about or whatever. We, we don't have to stay on very long here, but <clears throat> phrasing is, I mean, that's a huge, to me, it's a huge subject, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, and I've, you know, because I've, I've hosted so many people at workshops in my house, you know, over the years, hundreds, um, I've heard a lot of different, on everything, but especially phrasing. Um, I mean, obviously, phrasing is about communicating the idea. And the idea do isn't like three words necessarily. It's the sentence. However, sometimes a space after a word will make the next part of the sentence more poignant. But, you know, <coughs> Carmen McRae, to me, is... <clears throat> the best person to, to listen to for phrasing um, because uh, every single word that she sings means something. She's so committed to the message that every word, you can hear, that's how she sings. Every word, is, you can tell it means something to her. Um, and that takes a lot of a lot of practice and, and thinking, but it, to to be natural with that, you know. 
And that yeah. that's just one aspect of grazing. Then there's the, you know, the musical aspect. Again, it's kind of like what we were talking about with the groove, right? Um, if you're solidly connected to the groove, your phrasing can be unique and different. You don't have to start on the downbeat. You can start much later, like Shirley Horn or, you know. Yeah. I think, like, you can have a lot of, you know, phrasing options for a song. Like, <laughs> but mainly if, if you're playing with a band or, or just one musician, it really depends on what the, the musicians are playing because they might be have something going on where that, those phrasings that you usually do just won't make sense. So I, I really, I, I don't always make up new phrases. I do a lot of the same phrases over and over again, but I'm always open for new stuff. Like I, I can, I'm always ready very ready to switch idea um, whenever I hear something being played. You know, it's it's all a matter of, you know, it's a part of the big communication you have with the musicians. Yeah, so true. You know, I did, <coughs> the last gig I did uh, was March 7th with Carrie Frank on the B3 and Admar Ruiz on the piano. What an interesting gig. I had so much fun doing that gig. There was the groove, which I just totally loved, you know. And and then there was the harmonic freedom, which I totally loved as well. And yeah. I when I listened back to some video that was taken, I was I I was intrigued by hearing um not only the I always hear musicians doing that, right? They have they're connected to the groove, and they're they're doing what they want to do, but yet responding to the other musician and connecting with the other musician, but in a kind of a a way like a cloth cloth weaves together. You know, each yeah. each piece is different, but it weaves together. And mm -hmm. and I heard myself as as part of that as well. I have my own sense of rhythm and timing, and so I was doing what I wanted to. And that, uh, you know, Aviva has talked about this, you know, wondering how people get to this point. Um, I think that um, when uh, that is something desirable that, that singers want to achieve. And I think that comes from a lot of experience. Um, and uh, of course, there's things to that we can that everybody can study to get better and better at it. But it does come from having at least enough experience to be, um, I guess, um, content. Uh, that's not the word I was looking for, but content with yourself. You know uh, that you don't have to adapt yourself to everything. Rather, you you know. You're in your, you're you're expressing what you really feel, and you're aware of where you're at, and you're with the musicians responding, and all of that comes out like art. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no matter what you do, you have to do it with some kind of authority, you know, to for it to make sense to both the audience and yourself and the musicians. And when I I mean, when I say yourself, I mean it because sometimes I sing something, I sing a phrase, and I don't feel or hear anything like, okay, what, what now? Because this was lame. <laughs> I mean, you know, you really have to, also, you have to believe in it for your own sake, too. <laughs> Otherwise, there's nothing after it. And that's the way musicians feel, too, when they hear it. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. It's so true. And just yeah. practicing that state of mind, you know, that optimist state, uh, optimal state of mind, is helps you get there, right? You you, mm -hmm. pra you keep practicing this positive idea, and and if you make a mistake, you know, just letting it go or be being curious about it, like, oh, what should I do with that? Or always in the moment or in the in the future moment, you know? Yeah. It's it's also like like that that 
practice thing you can do when you have a you know piece of paper, blank paper, and somebody draws something, a circle or a line or whatever, and then the next person makes another, you know, a little contribution. And, and every time you have to look at this paper and see my contribution, what could that possibly be to make this better? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe maybe it's I mean maybe it's just a little <laughs> touch of something or maybe it's something like okay if i do this the balance will be okay again because it's like right right and that's the same with music you know you have to be able to kind of instantly imagine what's not there and you know contribute with something that makes it better somehow yeah it's like being a painter <clears throat> yeah yeah it's um it's where we're, we are co-arranging with the musicians and um yeah that's so true and it it seems seems to be such a subtle thing but it's so powerful and strong and it's definitely an ability that we that we reach or that we can get better at continue getting better at i mean i'm sure it's i'm sure this idea is relatable to life as well right <laughs> to just living yeah <laughs> totally. cooking <laughs> <laughs> Definitely <laughs> cooking. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. But you know, with with phrasing, you know, it's phrasing is not only you know doing crazy phrasing, but with a lot of notes, it's right. also just singing the melody. That's also phrasing. You know, yeah. How are you? I, I mean, if you just sing all of me, like it's it's like all of me, all of. Me. <laughs> I mean, there's so many different ways you can sing that little line, you know, without changing it. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's the, uh, you know, that the uh, line from Taxi where Robert De Niro says, you know, to himself in the mirror, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Oh, yeah. Are you talking <laughs> to me? Are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah. So that's always, that's always an interesting experiment, too, you know? <laughs> yeah. Somebody said, suggested that we, I, I'm, I'm kind of not totally set up for this, but, you know, do an eye reel video where you demonstrate phrasing. We, you know, we could probably do that and then post it rather than do it right this second. Um, yeah. But, I mean, Cinna just pr pretty much did it. <clears throat> and and if, if we were like, you know, with a, with a time, we can't do it together because we're all, you know, we're all off a half a second or something, right? <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I think a good person to listen to, just to check it out, is everybody, you know, all the classic people were great, right? But um, Shirley Horn is just so intriguing to listen to because yeah. she waits so long. One time I was in my living room listening to her singing In the Dark, and she said, she's like, In the Dark. in the dark right and i yeah. i started blushing in the space because i was thinking of what she was doing in the dark <laughs> <laughs> it was so powerful you know it was amazing yeah so space is is really you know a terrific uh a terrific tool space is of course not nothing it's something and 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 you know the Brazilians. A lot of time, the Brazilians don't change a lot of the melody at all, right? No, that's true. Well, they change rhythmically sometimes, you know. But it's, I mean, there, there's so much. Like if you do a lot of pauses and play with the this, oh, the empty space, it, the, you know, the more <laughs> the more important your your time. It's, you know, and sense of rhythm and groove. You know. Can you can you show an, a little example? Um. Yeah, but it's like you have to. Like when you, if you say, if you say, like, um, oh, let me think of melody. Okay. <laughs> okay, we take all of me again. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, uh, 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 oh, 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 me. Why not 
shake all of me. But you have to like, <laughs> you have to think about what's going on in the, in the space in between your, your phrases. Like, the, the amount of time, like, what, what would the band be doing? You know, there, there, there can be like, a, and you have to be like precise when you get, you know, when you enter again. I mean, it has to make sense. If you, you can't just like, all of me. Why not take, I mean, you. <laughs> you can't you even sing wrong. <laughs> I heard that. You can't even yeah. sing wrong, Sin the Eag. You build up so much tension that mm. it's really also crucial how you enter when you come back. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, and, totally. And it, it also, like, it also, it has to do with the groove, what's going on in the band, but also the way that you, the, the music that still plays in your head yeah. can also be felt and heard. And that's also like, that's something that Shirley Horn does so well. You can actually, you can kind of feel like how she's, ah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she's not just waiting right no she's like the, she's there the whole time she's looking at that picture she yeah she was doing something in the dark <laughs> when i was listening you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah space is so it's such a great tool um and then but the groove i'd, I'd have to say and and this is of course even in ballads right um ruth price from the jazz bakery once said to me she, that she could tell how well a singer swung by hearing her ballads Here, oh, what, uh, what, what, that, she that could word. tell uh, and not just to her him you know a singer she no, could tell the word i don't think i know the word oh swinging she could tell how a singer swung you know how yeah, well right. By hearing their ballads. Oh, ballads. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's true. I mean, you have you have to swing in a ballad too. Yeah, you have to be connected to the time, or you're going to be dead. You know, or you're going to put people deathly to sleep. Yeah, and also a thing, you know, that people uh, a lot of singers don't realize is that they can actually also dictate time. You know, for example, in a ballad. Yeah. By the if you choose to sing, you know, triplets or even eights, you know, you can actually make musicians follow you <laughs> by doing that or do double time or, you know. Yeah. There are so many nice options for you for your phrasing in a ballad. Yeah. And that's that's also a great thing to rehearse. I mean, or to practice. It's, Maybe if you actually now with your with I Real book, you can you can practice that you know trying to experiment with double time phrasing in a ballad or you know even though there is uh, the, the rhythm section is playing uh, even a you can see if you can make a phrase with you know um, swinging eight notes. Yeah. The double time thing is so cool mm -hmm. to, to do that within songs. I, li I like to do that. It feels good. Kind of hard to teach that. I think I'm not sure how people learn that, you know, unless they study um, um, timing and, um, you know, um, what's the word? That word that drummers always use, uh, breaking, you know, breaking down. Uh, the time into subdivisions, right? Oh yeah, yeah. But that's, I mean, I think I, I don't I don't think that's that that's. I mean, I think a lot of singers could, could learn that if they're aware of it. Right. Well, that's that's the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think they have to. It's kind of like what I was talking about before that body percussionist. Mm -hmm. There was. That that was basically what he was teaching us. He <laughs> he's yeah. a drummer too, so he was teaching us subdivisions. You know, um, it was one one two 
three, four, and this was with both hands, which I can't do right this second, and on the legs. And so that, 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 and then he had different, he, he said like, here's, here's two, one, two. And then he, so he put different formulas together, two, five, two. So then you'd, you'd have to do two, and then you'd have to do five, and then two. It's very, very cool. I think his name is Keith Taylor. Keith, I don't, I don't know. It sounds really useful for, you know, all musicians. Yeah, and fun, too. Jim Britt. Oh, my God. Hello. God, I love, I love this. See, all these people are joining. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was just going in, you know, into the living room watching uh, TV shows with my husband. <laughs> 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 Yesterday, I <clears throat> I don't know if you have people like this, but I have several friends who I've never met, I've never talked to like this face to face, um, but I've known for several years, and we're just basically Facebook friends, and we have long conversations and turn each other on to different cool things. So yesterday, we actually had a messenger video for like an hour. It was great. I, I'm just having so much fun with this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how are you how are you doing uh, regarding the virus stuff? Well, uh, wait, I mean, Denmark is totally closed down. Oh. Um, so we, we are trying to um, just, you know, go out and shop for food only when necessary. Yeah. And um, well, we took a walk today because we think Maybe we need the fresh air before they close down. I, I mean, they could even, you know, make a, uh, what was that called, when you can't leave your house at all? Quarantine, yeah. Yeah. Or lockdown. I mean, they might do that to the whole country, like in uh, Spain and Italy. Oh. So. No. Yeah. It's tough, you know, for, I mean, you, you guys are starting to feel it now. Um, <clears throat> a few days later. <clears throat> but, you know, all the gigs that are disappearing and it's I mean people are staying in a good mood but but I'm, I'm I mean I think a lot of the people I know will be okay through this but I'm just starting to be a little worried about what comes after you know will all will the venues survive the, the restaurants and that's actually more what I'm concerned about it's yeah, going to be a different world. it's definitely going to be a different world. I think people will. I really believe that people will get very creative, and um, yeah. although I think there'll be a lot of losses, um, but I think I do believe in the creativity uh, surgeons in people. You know, and and I think yeah. new things will new things will happen. Um, so I'm I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing what new things will happen. But yeah, and yeah. I'm, I feel blessed that I'm in a position that it's okay if I don't work, you know? And, um, yeah. and I, I mean, I have personal friends who it's not okay if they don't work, you know? And, and that's worrisome, yeah. you know? And one of our dear friends in the community just died, you know, a few days ago, Barry Zweig. Did you know him? Oh, I didn't, but I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, he was a really great person. Just this one of the sweetest souls, really. You would you would have loved him, Sina, and he would have loved you. And um, great player, really swinging, uh, and and both swinging and harmonically, kind of like Jim Hall. And you know, he he was a child prodigy. He played with Buddy Rich for five years, and he. He played with Dinah Shore on the Dinah Shore show for five years. And he was really a great player and just a great human being. So on the one hand, it was good that he, he passed right before everything started really zooming up, up here. You know, he, he died on Sunday. But also kind of sad that we can't all gather together at this time. But we'll, we'll gather together in, you know, probably a yeah. month or so. But um, so... Um, yeah, but uh, oh, just really an interesting period of time. That's why moments like this is really good. Uh, yesterday, yeah. Cecile Mor McLaurin Salvant did a three-hour 
concert in, in her living room or something with oh, cool. that great piano player whose name I haven't quite burned into my head yet. A very unusual name. Um, something Sargent or very unusual name. Anyway, I'll, I'll have to go look it up. The guy from her band? Maybe. What's his name? I can't remember, but I just saw her at the Village Vanguard. Is, does he have a usual, an unusual name? Yeah, I think he did. I think it's the same guy. And he, uh, I mean, it was really great. And they were, ta you know, talking about the honesty and the quality and the meaning of the music and the lyrics. And um, she, you know, she did, she did French songs, she, jazz songs, Broadway songs. Um, and he sang with her a little bit. And he has a great voice, too. It was really nice. <clears throat> um, and let's see, I have a, oh, Sullivan Fortner. Thank you, Cheryl. Sullivan <laughs> Fortner. I can't remember that was the guy. Really, really, really good. Um, and uh, I have a comment here. I've always approached a song as an actress with an entire biographical history behind it and having someone I am speaking to. Music has been secondary and have just gone by here. I'm exploring tempos more now and I'm weak in that. Coming in on time and starting on time, I've gotten over the panic of it, but must delve into this more. So any practice and instruction on this would be helpful at this point. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's interesting, Nora, because there are singers coming from that point of view. There's you know there's a number of singers who come from that point of view, especially in cabaret and <clears throat> coming out of Broadway uh, or classical singing, even although classical singing is very it's very important to be musically aware but um yeah you have to think of yourself i mean for me <clears throat> you have to think of yourself as a musician here here's a great a, a great thing to do nora this is really good and do it every week and i i promise you in a month you're going to be a lot better <clears throat> so you take a uh, you take a either a recording or a video of Cinna Eag, for instance. <laughs> and Cinna has a, a quartet with her, a trio and a horn player. <clears throat> so first, and make it a song that you know. So let's say she's singing All of Me. <laughs> <laughs> so first you listen to Cinna. Oh, you focus on Cinna. You listen to her, the way she, she comes in, how many times she sings, um, if she's changing the melody, if she's changing the phrasing, how she ends. The second time, <clears throat> and this is just an example, you can do it in any order you like. Second time, you listen, you focus on piano only. Focus on piano. How, do this, how does the piano player start? What are they playing behind everybody? Um, uh, are they soloing? What is their solo like? How do they end the song? Um, then the bass player, you know, then the drummer, then the sax player. I, I promise you, in a month, you are going to be 25% smarter at least because you start noticing what they're doing. You start, and, and it's, it, it, there's no big rule book. There's suggestions of what to look for, but you will find your own way to notice these things and, and, and what's important to you to soak up. <clears throat> How about you, Sina? Yeah, the thing is, we all come from different places. And um, for me, I, I, it's the opposite. Uh, that I came from, you know, accessing a song from the musician's point of view. And then later, as I, you know, became aware that I am a singer, I'm not going to play the saxophone or the piano. Then I really started focusing on the lyrics. And now that's really what I care about when I sing a song, but I always have all the other stuff, you know, in the back of my head and as a foundation. Um, but, and, and I have to say that, that it's really good if you want to improve on your time and, and your ability to, um, to make variations of you know when to enter the song or you know all these jazz things that that you can do it, it's cool then there are many good suggestions on how you improve
but also like I, I think I also embrace that there are different ways of singing and there's no I mean you can sing like the American songbook you don't have to jazz it up you know you can also just you know sing it as an actress you know and get inspired by jazz singers if, if you like but but now she's asking yeah. how 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 do you um, she's asking how you know how do you practice an instruction uh, like coming in on time starting on time things like that like actually the musical things that you already knew because you came from you know you came from playing the saxophone so you were taught that first <clears throat> right yeah. some singers come to it from a really different like her she's coming as an actress and so she the part to her is very understandable and she puts a lot of research and time into that but she she doesn't really know the full music responsibility no and it, uh, i mean a lot of it comes with just doing it and singing with a band i have to say it's you know experience um you know the way that you experience when you practice with a band you know to to figure out an intro and how to you know get inspired by what the piano player chooses to play in the intro or you know okay are we going to start this just bass and voice and you you it, it's you just have to learn as also you say Kathy you know to what the, the musicians are playing um, and I think it just comes with experience maybe that's just a, maybe that's too easy huh? Well, you're right, it comes with experience. However, <clears throat> I think she's asking, <clears throat> what, is she, what did she practice to get there? You know, like, um, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna paint a picture. Nora, I'm not sure if this is you, but um, you know, there's a band, the singer gets up to sit in or whatever and uh, comes in wrong. And uh, the piano player is playing the note of the melody and the singer is not in the same place. Doesn't doesn't really hear the pianist doing that. And um, uh, maybe uh, somebody solos, and then the singer doesn't really know where to come in. That kind of thing. I think I think Nora is talking about that and how to okay. how to learn about that. You know. Yeah, it's. I think it like a lot of time. It's it's about you know learning. You know what is the concept of. For example, an intro and the solo that it's the you know you know get the, the experience of like when you sing all of me <laughs> the, the the trumpet <laughs> solo will probably be the same length as the melody or there's also the option that one instrumentalist take a solo that's only half and you have to be ready to jump in you know and you know all that time it can be really helpful to you know, have the melody playing in your head just so you know where you are all the time. And be aware of, you know, maybe the band leader will kind of signal if it, I, you don't know if all the musicians are going to take a solo or not. You know, it's <laughs> sometimes it's only one solo and then somebody might signal you and you have to be ready to, to jump in and start on the, on the head again. <laughs> You know, actually, something that just came up while I was listening to you, <clears throat> but Nora, <clears throat> Sarah, oh gosh, sorry, Sarah, I can't answer right now. Um, so <clears throat> one, one thing, but Nora, you might have to do it with somebody who reads music first, either a singer or a musician, but get the chart in front of you, the melody, the, the lyrics, <clears throat> and count out the time, which might be, in all of me, for example, it would be in 4-4, four, four, what they call 4-4. Four, four. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, all of me, 2, la, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2. And then you actually do what Sina was talking about. You, you listen to the whole song and do what I was talking about, too. Uh, listen to the whole song, reading through the music, and then you understand 
what's happening because you, you see it. And that's what the musicians are doing. They're playing through this music and it is a mathematical thing that's really real, you know, um, other than special arrangements, that's what everybody is doing. Um, <clears throat> Anita said something, I work out what my starting note is and what beat the original melody starts on and then practice it over and over again with a metronome in the iReal book. Okay, so Nora, if you don't know what the iReal book is, uh, you can ask any one of us, you know, or, um, you know, we can show you the direction. Uh, Craig says one thing to understand how to clap on the downbeats and the upbeats and then practicing a phrase that starts on each one. That's very good too. And that I think is, in my experience, is a little more advanced. So Nora, again, you'd have to get together with somebody to um, either a friend or a, a singing teacher or a musician to help you to, to understand what that is. And then you can practice it on your own. Uh, Judy says, I always used Abersol tracks to practice and you need to know the form to get it before getting on stage. You have to practice that beforehand. Also playing the chords on the piano and learning the song. Absolutely, of course. We know that uh, playing the piano even very simply but in time is really good. <clears throat> yeah, and you're right, Nora. Videos, videos of yourself singing are great, but that's that helps if you understand what's going on. If you don't really understand fully, like some of these things we're talking about, you have to understand those things, and then when you see the videos, you're going to get a lot more out of it, don't you think, Sina? Yeah, but I, I, I really, really think you, you, you've got to get together with a piano player or someone who understands music and, and, and practice this and figure out what, what it is you know and what you don't know. Yeah. Um, it, 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 yeah, because you don't want to, you know, if, if, you, if you really don't know when to enter a song and find your key, you don't want to do that on the bandstand the first time. You know, it's, it's better to, you know, get together with someone who you feel safe with and who, who's, you know, you know, feels good about uh, teaching, teaching you. <laughs> right. You know, and someone who understanding and, and just um, play around with it and, and get, get comfortable, you know, just start with uh, one or two songs that you get really comfortable with and, and find a way of doing it and, and for example, getting to know your tempos and, and, and uh, for example, if you get up to a jam session, you can actually say if you know it, I'd like you to play a band, uh, eight bar band, um, and then count the tempo. Then you know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. and you don't get surprised and lose your your beat or your key or yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that that's always extremely helpful to kind of know ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, and also, I mean, it's, it's always better if you want to, you know, go up. Uh, at a jam session, it's, it's all, always better that you know what you want than than letting the musicians like give us what you want. Yeah, and that's you know that's just like a little a tiny little example of that too is you know how singers students you know sometimes get up and they say, "Do I have to actually count off?" Okay, so the answer is no. However. If you don't count off, you have to be ready to perform the song at the tempo that the musician set. Yeah. So if you want the tempo that you want, Might you have to. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe not. And also the key, you mm -hmm. know. Right. Oh, boy. Because a lot of songs, especially if you're a female singer, a lot of songs are, you know, originally the way jazz musicians have learned them, really not the right key for you. Right. <laughs> They're actually the opposite of the right key. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nora, I'm just going to, I understand when you practice with a band, you're good. 
Um, and, and the other times is when, you know, when you have um, worry. But these things that we're talking about are the answer. You have to... You have to put in the time to learn this stuff. And, you know, Sina and I don't get up on the bandstand and just sing a song because we liked it. We actually practiced the song and looked it over, you know, right? And got the hard parts. We looked at the hard parts and we went over it, over and over it until yeah. we got it, you know? So we're not doing nothing either. Your, your something to do is different than what our something to do is, but everybody's still, still working. Still paying attention. Yeah. True. <laughs> Sorry, I was just reading Kenneth Koenig. He's a sax player in um, <laughs> up the coast in Santa Santa Cruz, and he says, "Hey, Kathy, it's great to see you. Thanks for helping improve our lives at home. We are bringing a team in to pad our walls, so when we go nuts, we won't hurt ourselves." <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> Just be sure to have enough alcohol in the house. <laughs> <laughs> that too. So I'm I'm pumping some. I have like these. What are they called? They're not humidifiers. They put out oil. Oh, they're diffusers, right? But I've been putting yeah. a, a little bit of alcohol in. But we're running short on alcohol, and I said, "Well, we have alcohol." <laughs> I don't know. Like Grand Marnier pumped into the air. I don't know. Could be nice. <laughs> Could be okay, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, well, anything? I, let me ask you this. Um, um, a few people were asking <coughs> about um, releasing singles as opposed to CDs. Have you have you thought about that? I've had a few discussions about that. Yeah, um, I've actually been thinking about doing it. You know, instead of releasing a whole album, because these days, it's getting more and more difficult to recoup, you know, the expenses of making a, an album. Yeah. And um, and sometimes you have a track that that is just great, but you don't have enough music. And like, why not just put it out there? I think. So yeah. I, I might do that. I have a couple of tracks that I that I thought didn't fit with the rest of the song on an album, so I never released them. And I'm thinking about actually just putting them out. Um, and also, you know, releasing an album, um, more and more people are getting, you know, aware that even though you don't sell singles anymore like you did in the old days, uh, it's, it's very valuable to, uh, to, to um, release a single or two or three before the whole album, you know, on, on Spotify and digital platforms because then you get a bigger chance of getting playlisted. Yeah. Because, yeah, because when you when you release the whole album, at, at, you know, one one time, they they consider you for some playlist, and that's it. But if you give them a chance, like one, two, three times, then all those times you get, you know, in the in the big pool of songs that they can select. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That's why they do it now. That's why you release a single before an album now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, like, uh, you know Kathy Cousins? Are you familiar with Kathy? No. <laughs> she's a singer in Detroit, and um, she's she's been a real successful singer in a little bit of the R&B and jazz kind of mixture world. She's a songwriter, a very successful songwriter, and now she's actually a successful painter as well. She even paints while she sings. So like, you know, while the guy's taking a solo, she'll, she'll actually do a painting. <laughs> and a good painting. She's, I mean, she's not just like, you know, like, you know, little flowers or something. Um, but um, anyway, she's a very intense and good business person. She's managed and booked herself for 50, 40 or 50 years. And um, so she and one of her... Um, one of her tribe members, you know, he's basically her, um, he could, I don't, he does different things for her, manages her and produces her and stuff. And so they've been putting out uh, singles, but they're more in the crossover. So, <clears throat> but they're doing really well. They're, they're um, in that <clears throat> genre anyway, it's, it's um, 
almost easier, I think, to market it, you know. Uh, so, um, but, and I wouldn't be surprised if that was the way that the, um, that the way that music, the music business is going, you know, with the, yeah. you know, the difficulty of selling a whole CD and, you know. Yeah, but and, the, the one thing that's still tricky is that the, the music critics are very conservative, uh, actually, they still want the whole album, otherwise they won't write about it. Okay, and, so that's a really a good point. still wants a physical CD, you know. Yes. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so if you, if you release the music to get, you know, attention in the written medias, then you would probably want the whole album. Yeah. Good job, yeah. But if you have a strong, I mean, if you have a strong song, a really good track that you feel like people would really like this, I mean, th there's a good chance that people will agree and it will be playlisted. And maybe at some point, if a lot of people likes it, then somebody will write about it. Yeah, and you can you can do a video of it, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, um, a woman I'm co-producing, a really great... Uh, Film, film composer named Catherine Bostick. She's, she had a long career of various, doing various things. She was a back, backup singer for big names. She was a jazz singer. She played piano. Um, she is an incredible songwriter, kind of like the Americana style, you know. And um, last year, I think it was, I think it was last year, or maybe a little longer, she uh, came out with a song that she sat played piano. She had some strings in the background, but um, basically it was just her singing this song called State of Grace. And uh, it's gorgeous and it's out there and people people love it and they made comments to her and she got attention from it. And it really, I mean, because let's face it, that's what we're, <clears throat> that's what we're doing, right? When we put out we our music. To. Yeah, we want to be loved. <laughs> 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 but you know, so that we, that, so that the whole machine keeps going, right? <clears throat> you know, we want somebody to reach out and say, "Hey, uh, wow, you should come and do a workshop or a concert." And there's another yeah. piece of the, the moving forward. So, so that's. I just wouldn't be surprised if that was a lot more of the way it's going. I did hear about. Um, I have heard about people investing in records i mean like young people going out and buying records but they're so expensive that yeah i don't i don't know if that's really plausible for us to be making records and you you made a record right yeah i have, I have three now oh um, how are they doing they, um they, the thing is i'm i'm very lucky to have an audience not big audiences but an audience both in japan and a little bit china and some European countries and a few in the States. So, and of, co of course, Denmark. Uh, so when you put all that together, it's just enough to, for it to make sense to release a, a record. Cool. But if I only had one of the markets, then it would be too expensive. Yeah. So it's like little drops here and there makes it work. Yeah. Um, just curious, how many, how many records did you make at a time for each project? Um, I think a, a thousand. Wow. Well, that's, yeah, that's I a lot. Yeah. And, and like for one of them, we have, uh, I think we have made a, like a second, um, what do you call it? Um, we reprint. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, but the, you know, I have a very good uh, label in Hong Kong that he, he always buys like a couple of hundreds and maybe more if he's, he runs out of stuff and, you know, and then I sell a few here and there on my gigs, you know, sometimes I don't sell one record, but sometimes I sell five and, you know, I, I, I perform all the time. So I mean, yeah, I do sell some, but they are so heavy. Man, I've been traveling around in the stage with my records this last month. Oh dear! <laughs> kind of like bringing a, bringing a big band book. 
Hey, I'm sorry. I have to uh, stop now because I have to do something that I promised my husband I would do, and it went over quite a bit. Sina Eeg, that's so nice of you to join. I I had planned on just blabbing myself, and I'm, it was just so much fun blabbing with you. Yeah, it was nice. I, I, I'm, I, I am. I can't wait because I think I have chocolate downstairs. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. I was talking, but it was really nice. Another way of spending the, the evening for me. I didn't expect that. That's really cool. <laughs> Say hi to Varney for us. And um, everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in, making comments, and um, you can always message me or send me send me an email at kathy at kathy um i know saturday i'm going to have paul jost on on the line with me and i'm not sure who tomorrow yet but um i'm just going to keep doing this at noon and see how it goes okay good idea stay safe everybody Sina, stay safe bye Thank <laughs> you.